We're just going to quickly have an interview now with Owen Byrne from our county under-21 football team. Uh, we're going to have a little bit of a chat to him about all things, uh, I suppose, COVID. Everyone probably fed up talking about it now, but you can't avoid it at the minute. So, firstly, Owen, thanks a million for taking the time out to take an interview with us. Oh, well, uh, I suppose as a, as a young footballer coming up, you know, what what's it like dealing with COVID at this stage? Now we're twelve months in. We probably all thought it'd be over and gone by now, but we're twelve months in. Like, you know, it's a lengthy effect on the game. Now, what's it like dealing with at this stage yeah. for yourself? Um, obviously, it's have a had a huge impact on likes of myself and all the the lads that are playing Gaelic and throughout the year, and lads from around the club. Like you're going from meeting the lads three, four, five nights a week to to seeing seeing none of them. From one week to the next, and uh, yeah, the fun is kind of wore out now. Well, after the after the summer, anyway, the fun kind of wore out fairly quickly. And I suppose, look, uh, you know, you with the under twenties as well, but with your club team at home, I suppose you're a group that has nearly came together all along. You'd be very tight knit. You know, you've been the same age group the whole way up. You're a group of young lads within eighty. You know, the loss of collective training there must be huge on on that outlook. Yeah, yeah, of course it is. Yeah. Um, we have a fairly young team and you, you're growing up with these fellas and um, whenever you're not seeing them in the pitch, um, it's obviously made a huge impact and you're trying to um, train on your own and do run sessions and gym sessions on your own and you don't have the right gear and stuff or it's kind of awkward doing it all right. Um, and training on your own is never going to be anything like training with the lads. Like you're never going to get as much um, as much of a productive session on your own it's all kind of the fellas around you always help motivate you and um you know they really kick on kick yourself on and and everyone's improving them each other you know having said that last year it was a great run to the final with tina healy has it left you lads hungry for more there it has oh of course it has yeah um yeah last year was obviously a fairly we did uh we got to the final it's the first time in a good long time so uh we were fairly hungry to get back on this year and um couldn't have happened at, at a worse time for us anyway, the, the 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 big break anyway. Um you'd be dying to get out, you'd be itching to get out and, and back into training and trying to improve a bit and go to try to take the next step next year, hopefully. And um with all this going on, it's it's uh, everything's come to a halt altogether. From your own point of view, you've you've had great uh, structures there in Tinnahili with underage. I've, I was over in the field a couple of nights there before the final, and there's there's a great structure. Seems to be great structures there with the underage and the feedback from the players and stuff. But working under the likes of Kevin O'Brien and An- Alan Costello has had to be a huge help to a young player like yourself at this stage of your career as well. Yeah, yeah, of course it has. Yeah, um, I would have uh, Alan and Alan and Kevin. I've had them since. Um, Alan since I was under 16 with the county and Kevin since under 17s or minor whatever the, they call it now and uh, yeah so two very experienced coaches and uh, they're they've, they've definitely helped me develop uh, myself and the teams that I've been on um, and start continuing to develop more more teams you know Kevin's uh, well he's involved in the 20s now but uh that's where the future of the football is. Like it's all, all the emphasis I think anyway should be on the, the underage groups and, and stuff like that down in the club. And yeah, we don't really know much about fixtures or anything. Yeah, unfortunately, but with both club and county for the year, like what are your aspirations for the year ahead? Firstly, just to get back playing. Anyway, um, that's the my main hope for the for the coming months. Anyway, and uh, obviously just to get back back training with the lads and. Hopefully, get a few games in under our belts and try win a few games, try and win a few matches, and kind of keep improving. That's all. That's all you really can hope to do, really, isn't it? Just get a bit of momentum going forward, I suppose. That's it, yeah. And I suppose looking forward five de- five years down the line, where do you see yourself? Five years down the line, you can't, you can't look too far into the future, obviously. But uh, obviously, try to try to put yourself back in a position that we were in last year, getting to the final and. Hopefully, try to get the next step going and and try win one. If everything was back to normal and everything, what would you do? Like, what what would your view on you know boosting the underage structures within the county and taking Wicklow to another level? What would you what would your view be on that? Um, myself, I I uh, I think 
No, there is a obviously a, a high em- emphasis on the younger players at the moment and the development squads going up their their whole way whole way down through all the age groups now. Um, just keeping that going and and uh, try to get more maybe try to get more uh, football in schools, hurling in schools and stuff, and just keep them interested. You know, if they're if they're having fun at at the end of the, the GAA, they're going to keep going and. The more numbers, the more power you have, really, when it comes to county and um, just more more uh, pressure for places and stuff on underage development squads. So it's going to improve the players as they come up along. Yeah, and I suppose if you had a transfer market and you could bring one player into Tinnahealy in the county, who would you bring in? Um, it's a tricky one now. So, sir, well, it'd be hard luck past Brian Fenton, obviously, when he's the so called best player in the country, but ah, there's a few lads you'd have. One of the around Dana Healy might be looking at you scratching your head now when you say that. <laughs> ah, doesn't matter if it doesn't bother me, whoever's whoever's wearing the jersey wears the jersey. Um <laughs> no, I, I don't think I'd ever turn Brian Fenton away anyway, if he was rolling up in the club. No, no. I don't think anyone would. And I suppose after all this is everywhere's open up and everything is going again, hopefully it won't be too long. If you could bring four lads off for the day for a bit of crack with you, who would you bring? Four four players around the country, like, is it? Ah, uh, your four players are, well, from your own or Wicklow or wherever you want to. So, yeah. Brian uh, Fenton now, obviously. <laughs> Brian Fenton, yeah, he'd have to come with me. Uh, so, if we're filling the car, I'd love to have uh, Thomas Thomas Gallagher in there, Cavan. He seems like a bit of a, a raw individual now. Uh in under a high ball there during the championship, he was fairly looked like good crack anyway. Um, Michael Murphy, I'd, I'd I'd love to spend a bit of time with. He seems like he has a, a, a great insight to the game anyway. He's a lot of experience and you learn a few things off him. Um, and lastly, um, Shawnee O'Shea, uh, I'd like to obviously have him in the back of the car there as well. He'd be good crack and he'd be, you know, fairly. Fairly tidy footballer as well. You might learn something off. Good look. Thanks a million for taking your time out. Uh, it was a pleasure talking to you, and I wish you all the best with club and county in the new year. Hope all goes well for you once again. Thanks a million for for your interview. Thanks, Emmett. Cheers.